There's a passage where the, where the Buddha recommends a way of thinking to help overcome your hatred of another person. And it starts out, this person has wronged me, but what should I expect? This person has wronged people I love, but what should I expect? This person has done good things for people I hate, but what should I expect? And he has you go through the, not just the past tense, but also the present tense and the future tense. It all sounds pretty cynical. The trick is learning how to think in these ways and not be cynical. And that comes down to the tenth contemplation, which is that you train yourself not to get worked up over impossibilities. We would like for the world to be full of wonderful people. Everybody's fundamentally good. Everybody is trustworthy. That's how we usually come into life, just assuming that we can trust people. And then we find out there are people we can't. You have to only just look in your own mind. You have all kinds of attitudes in your own mind, good, bad, indifferent, and everybody else is the same way. We're trying to feed off the goodness of other people, and when they don't have goodness to offer, we find ourselves feeding off their bad qualities, which of course makes us sick. This means we have to be guarded. This is one of the qualities I noticed in Ajahn Phu. He was very guarded in his words, guarded in whom he would trust. But he managed to do it in a way that wasn't cynical. It was just very realistic. And to not be cynical, that means you have to be in a position where you're not trying to feed off of other people. You have to train yourself that so you can feed off the good qualities of your own mind. That way you can live with the ups and downs and the goods and the bads in the world, and not have any ill will over the bad parts. The ill will comes from wanting something out of other people and then not getting it. But if you can put yourself in a position where you don't feel threatened by other people's bad actions, bad words, bad thoughts. And when you're not trying to find <clears throat> anything to feed off of them, then you can live in the world with goodwill for everybody, realizing that we all have our good and bad sides. You try to look for the good in other people so you can help develop it, but realizing that you can't always trust that it's going to be there or it's going to be ready to be developed. So how do you do all this? Well, you start out by working on the technique of getting used to your breath, getting familiar with your breath. Noticing that when you breathe in, breathe out, where does it feel good, where does it not feel so good? How can you tell when a breath is too long or too short? How can you read what the body needs in terms of breath energy? These are all skills that you can work with over time, over time. Find a spot where you feel at home inside. Let your attention settle there and learn how to protect it. One of the ways in which we feel invaded or threatened by other people is if we feel their energy moving into our energy field. And one way to prevent that is once you've got some good energy going in your selected spot, allow it to spread and think of your own awareness filling the whole body. And allowing that sense of well-being to seep out and spread throughout the whole body as well. And then this becomes your place. Other people's energy can be directed at you, but you've got this force field inside that repels it. So it slips past. The first time you notice this actually happening, you begin to gain a sense that you do have a sense of strength and a sense of not being threatened that you didn't have before. And you want to nurture this, look after it. But it's not just the technique that helps you. 
the right attitude helps as well. And part of it is that attitude of being guarded. The Buddha uses the word being heedful. That's the basis, he says, of all good qualities in the mind. But it's also the basis for your protection. Realizing that you can't just run into a situation and immediately figure it all out. You've got to watch things for a while. And as a Buddhist said, remind yourself that you're like a person who's sick. You've got a wound, and you have to care for your wound. Don't eat the wrong kinds of food. Don't get it, let it get dirty. Keep it clean. Keep yourself well nourished. Don't do any activities that are going to open up the wound again. Now, we'd like to go through the world in a way that we don't have to be guarded, but it doesn't work that way. And again, you don't have to look very far. Just look into your own mind, and you see there are all kinds of things that can threaten to take over if you're not careful. Well, other people have those too, and they may not be working on keeping those things in control. So you keep up your guard. Now this isn't tense or bitter because you've got the sense of well-being inside that helps to nourish us. The second thing that helps with the attitude, or getting the right attitude, is finding good people. Once you've found someone that you've learned over time that you can trust, try to spend time with that person so you can pick up what are that person's good qualities, what are the skills that that person has mastered, what are that person's ways of looking at things. And as you pick that up, you find that your attitude changes as well. So you learn how to think in ways that undercut whatever bitterness or irritation or sense of being threatened by people outside or other situations outside. Because a lot of times it's your own thinking that leads these germs into your system. So if you have that combination of the physical sense of well-being that comes with the breath, the technique, and the right attitudes in the mind, that this is a world filled with all kinds of things, all kinds of people. Your own mind is filled with all kinds of thoughts. You have to be guarded around your own thoughts. So learn how to be guarded, but at the same time, don't take that sense of being guarded as a weight. Do what you can to lighten the load. Nourish yourself with a sense of well-being inside. Look after your breath. Look after your mind together with the breath, because this is what gives you strength. And it's from the strength that you can keep up your guard as you need to. To be well nourished, to nourish that sense of the center that's going to be your safe place, and to learn how to develop as much goodness within yourself as you can, so that even though you have to be guarded in this world, you can treat people with goodwill. The basic attitude of goodwill is that you wish them well, realizing that in some cases the best thing for you and that other person may be to stay away from each other. That comes not from ill will, but just from noticing that this relationship is not working out, it's not going in the right direction, and fortunately we don't don't all have to join in some enlightened society in, in order to be enlightened. It's an individual quest, and you have to face the fact there's some people that you're never going to be resolved with, never going to find reconciliation with. But you don't get worked up over impossibilities. You focus on doing good where you can, both inside and out, and that becomes your strength. 
when you listen to the Ajahn's talk, they'll often talk about the need for a fence. As Ajahn Mahabhava says, virtue is a fence for your thoughts, words, and deeds. Concentration in particular is a fence for your mind. It's through discernment that you learn how not to need those fences anymore, as long as your discernment is not yet all around. You need to keep those other fences up. And John Cha mentions that the lesson he took away with him after being with the John Mun for three days is that you have to make your practice in the shape of a circle. He thought about that for a long time. And then he realized that what it meant it was like putting a fence around your home. You do the practice all the time, because your mind needs this protection all the time. Don't let there be any gaps in the fence. There's a beautiful fence that surrounds only three sides of your house doesn't protect you, because it leaves that hole in the side open. So we do have to be guarded as we deal with ourselves and deal with other people. But we've got this source of nourishment inside that gives us the strength so that it's not a burden and it's not bitter. It's simply facing things as they are and being strong enough that it's not a problem. <laughs>